From Hollywood, it's the new Edgar Bergen Hour with Charlie McCarthy. Now, Fip, you Bergen, so help me, I'll mow you down. It's Sunday night, and time again transcribed for Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy with Mortimer Snurd, Effie Slinker, Gary Crosby, Candy Bergen, Carol Richards, Ray Noble, Jack Kirkwood, Gloria Gordon, the Mellow Man, yours truly, John Heaston, and our special guest, Santa Claus's helper, Mr. Frank Fawcett. And here they are now, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. And Merry Christmas to you, too, Charlie. My dear, my dear sweet little boy. Dear sweet little boy? Yes. <laughs> Have you been inhaling that plum pudding? No, no. <laughs> no, it's just that tonight, Charlie, tonight my little daughter Candy is going to be on this show. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm so happy, you know. She, she's the apple of my eye. Yes, I know. But don't forget, Buster, I'm the cabbage of your bank book. Yes. <laughs> Candy is so talented, you know. She sings, she acts, she recites, she plays the piano. And she gets wonderful marks in school, too. And she's only nine years old. Doesn't that make you a little ashamed, Charlie? Well, so what? Her wisdom teeth grew too fast, that's all. <laughs> Could happen to anybody. Yes. I hope you're not jealous. Me? Jealous? <laughs> I welcome competition. You do. What have I got to worry about? Let the kid have her chance. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Charlie. Okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough, folks. That's enough now. Goodbye, little kid. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. 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 She doesn't take a hint, does she? All right, all right. Yeah. Now, Charlie, please. Candy. My my own little candy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, tonight. Tonight, my heart is full of joy. Tonight, my little girl steps out into the footlights of life. Down, Daddy, down. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smoke, she's getting laughs, too. <laughs> Watch it, kid. Remember, there's only one star on this show. Just remember that. Oh, but I'm sure he won't mind how good I am. Mortimer's so sweet. Yeah, that does it. That does it. <laughs> That kid's got to go. No, she's got to go. All right. I think Candy's very amusing. Yes, yes. She's a girl after my own heart. Yeah, and after my job. No, no. <laughs> I'm not careful. Good night. Good night, you, you, you trial size Lucille Ball, you. All right. But I want to be on the show, Charlie. Oh, well, sure. I want to be just like Daddy. Oh, no ambition, eh? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Edgar. Oh. Charlie. Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Noble. Oh, I say you're Edgar's little girl, of course, yes. Now, don't tell me your name. No, no, I'm sure I know it. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Your little dextrose, aren't you? <laughs> That's candy, Ray, candy, yes. And now, Charlie and Candy, remember, I asked both of you to learn that wonderful poem, The Night Before Christmas. Uh -huh. And, Charlie, did you memorize it? Well, I tell you, yeah, I uh, yes, part of it. Part of it, yes. I've been sick a good deal, but I worked on it. Yes, I see. Which part? Uh, the title. Oh, the title, yes. <laughs> Daddy, I studied hard and memorized the whole thing. Why don't you get lost? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> so you memorized the whole poem, Candy? Yeah, now, she may be young, but she's way beyond her years in intelligence. Yeah, I hate middle-aged kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell you, children, I'm going to give you each a very wonderful present if you will recite the poem right now on this program. Uh -huh. Yes. And you can take alternate lines. I think that will be interesting. Uh, you start it, Candy. Oh, of course. All right. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Yes. Charlie? Huh? Yes? Well, oh, there's more? Y yes. <laughs> 
Hey, pal. Hey, buddy. Hey, kiddo. What's the next line? Not a creature was stirring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a louse. No, a mouse. <laughs> Andy, my dear? The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. And the leave me the room. Could stand some fresh air. No. <laughs> Folks that say Saint, Saint who? Saint Vitus? No, no. Saint Bernard? No. Saint Paul? No. Minneapolis? No, no. I'm on the wrong track, you certainly are. Well, I try, gee whiz. Continue. The children were nestled, all snug in their bed. And shoot if you must, his old gray head. No. <laughs> Please, Charlie, think of me. Oh, bald head. No. Now, Charlie, you know the part about Santa Claus where he rides through the sky? Oh, yeah, yeah. He flies through the air with the greatest of ease, the jolly fat man with the red DVD. <laughs> that is completely wrong. Well, few of us are perfect. Yeah, just... Candy, will you help him out? When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprung from my bed to see what was the matter. I tore open the shutter and threw up the, the sack. <laughs> Reindeer. What about the reindeer? Yeah, what about them? Yeah. <laughs> what were their names? There were Dancer and Prancer. Yeah. Dancer, Prancer, Dandruff, and Blinces. No, no. <laughs> Thunder and Lightning. No. <laughs> what did Santa say? You know, on Dancer, on Prancer. Oh, yeah. On Dancer, on Prancer. And what do you know? Prancer came in and paid two twenty to show. <laughs> Candy. Not my little candy. <laughs> I taught her that. Yeah, I... <laughs> you taught her that. Yes, sir. Uh, well, it'd been better if you'd spent a little more time learning the poem instead. Uh, don't you get it, Bergen? We both know the darn thing. Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah. We were only teasing you, Daddy. I see. Well, you two are always thinking of some monkey business. Yeah, we're busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should have greater respect for your father. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, I've been given a very rare talent. You have? Yes. Why do you hide it? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I am a great ventriloquist. Oh. Yes, I am one of the few people in the world who can throw their voices. You see, I can throw my voice upstairs. I can throw my voice under the stage if I wish. Yes. You mean like this, Daddy? Hello, Joe, you down there? You, what do you want, Candy? <laughs> oh, no, not you, Joe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is our own Christmas carol, lovely Carol Richards, singing I'll Take Romance. Thank you. 
my heart is young and eager and gay. I'll take my heart away. I'll take the man. So my lover, when you want me, Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the portion of our program that teaches you how to be completely self-sufficient. We proudly present our expert on everything. Here he is, direct from a successful year of unemployment, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> Professor Kirkwood and his do-it-yourself department. Good evening, Professor Kirkwood. And what is your topic for today? My subject should interest all those who spent more than they could afford this Christmas. My talk today is entitled, Bankruptcy and How to Enjoy It. <laughs> Professor, do you mean to say that you're actually advocating that our listeners try to get out of paying their Christmas bills by going into bankruptcy? That's right, boy. Buy my home bankruptcy kit and become a successful bankrupt. <laughs> Professor, do you consider yourself a successful bankrupt? <laughs> Am I successful? Sure. Oh, what a silly question. Listen, boy, when I got out of high school, I didn't have a dime. Yeah. And today, I owe over $100,000. <laughs> In other words, year after year, you just go deeper and deeper into debt. Thing. That's right, boy. Uh -huh. What's good enough for good old Uncle Sam is good enough for me. <laughs> Professor, aren't you a little ashamed of yourself jipping all those people out of their money? Oh, that I am, boy. Yeah. Sometimes I get to crying so hard I can hardly count the dough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kirk, but why don't you go straight? Nothing doing. A friend of mine went straight and nearly starved. Why? He was a contortionist. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was contortionist. Yeah. Oh, just call me the red horse. I'm flying tonight. Yeah. That will do. Now, to get back to your bankruptcy kit, just what does it contain? Well, uh, most important of all, it contains the names of some fine lawyers. Uh-huh. Now, just look at the list. Here's the firm of Get It, Got It, and Gone. Yeah. <laughs> ABS, I object. Cut rate criminal lawyers. Walk upstairs and save ten years. <laughs> oh, they're terrific. Yeah. In the last case, they got the jury so mixed up, they sent the judge to the chair. <laughs> That's pretty clever. Yeah. Right? Oh, then there's Loophole McKay. Yes. Why, during his career, he defended 30 murderers and each one was hanged. They were all hanged? Yep. Oh, my. That's how he got his slogan. Swing and sway with Loophole McKay. <laughs> Uh, back in London, they have a, a frightfully distinguished law firm. No. Oh. Yes. Uh, their name is Button, Button, Button and Zipper. <laughs> Zipper? Yes, old boy. He replaced one of the buttons that dropped off. <laughs> <laughs> one of the buttons that dropped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not well. <laughs> Professor, our time is running out. Now, just what is the procedure that you have to go through, as you put it, to enjoy bankruptcy? Well, first you have to file your bankruptcy. Yes. 
Any ordinary nail file will do. Well, I... The next step is to demand the habeas corpuscle, mandamus pizzicato, and a yes. choice of two vegetables. Yes. <laughs> or, as proved by the case of Smirnoff versus vodka... Yeah. <laughs> that was quite a case. I imagine. <laughs> Went to the high court. Uh. <laughs> you get it? High court. <laughs> Well, thank you, Professor, but I'm afraid our time is up. Oh, too bad. Well, I'll just collect my lecture fee and go. Well, Professor, I'm sorry. I don't believe I can pay you. Then why not? I've just decided I'm filing for bankruptcy. No, no. <laughs> Now, here's a suggestion for the holiday season from a very good friend of yours. Say, the next time you plan a party, how about making it a pizza party? A spicy pizza pie bubbling with tangy sauce and mellow cheese is a quick trick to make your party a success. And when you use Chef Boyardee pizza pie mix, your pizza takes no time at all. It's that easy. Each gay yellow carton of Chef Boyardee pizza pie mix contains all the ingredients. The flour mix for a flaky crust, the yeast to raise it, the rich pizza sauce, even the Italian-style cheese. So, how about it? The next time you plan a party, how about making it a pizza party with Chef Boyardee Pizza Pie Mix? Oh, pizza molto bene, what a tasty pizza pie. Boyardee's the chef that treats you to that real Italian style. Boyardee Italian Pizza Pie by Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee. Now, here's Gary Crosby singing Autumn Leaves. The falling leaves Drift by the window The autumn Summer kisses Ah, the sunburnt hands I used to hold Since you went away The days grow long But I miss you most of all, my darling, when all leaves start to fall.
Oh, I got you under my skin. Now, you know, that's kind of silly. and There's hardly room for me under there. Yeah. I, I noticed, I noticed there's a bandage on your arm there. Yeah. Did you hurt your arm? No, I hurt my nose. Oh, I see. Yeah. Why'd you put the bandage on your nose? Well, I couldn't breathe if I did that. Couldn't breathe. <laughs> yep. How did you hurt your nose in the first place? Well, bending down to tie my shoelaces. Oh, I... <laughs> That's ridiculous. I guess so. How could you hurt yourself trying to tie your shoelaces? Well, I was on the roof. Oh, you're on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and the shoes were down on the ground. Oh. <laughs> what were you doing on the roof, Mortimer? Uh, what were you doing on the roof? Yeah, I was on the roof. Yeah, I see. <laughs> what were you doing on the roof? Oh, I was... Uh, oh. <laughs> I was making holes in it. The rain wasn't leaking in the parlor in the right places. Oh, I... <laughs> wasn't leaking in the right places. No, it, it wasn't coming now where I'd set the pans out. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, you're smart, Alex, out there tonight. <laughs> well, <clears throat> rain is very important. Not in my parlor, it ain't. I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, rain turns everything green. No, it doesn't turn everything green, no. My cow, Bessie's been out in the rain. <laughs> Bessie stayed brown. Bessie stayed brown. Yeah. She was out there during the heavy downpour? Yeah, she was standing... Well, she was in the water, deep water. Yeah, how deep? Well, it was up to her crankcase, up to her grass. <laughs> been difficult to milk her. Yeah, I guess that's how they got the saying, how now, drowned cow? I... <laughs> well, we've had more than our share of moisture this year. Have you any idea how much rain fell this last season? Well, I'd say all of it. All of it. <laughs> rain is an interesting phenomenon. No, phenomenon, phenomenon. <laughs> Do you know what makes rain? Well, I guess water makes the best kind. <laughs> but let's start with evaporation. All right, you start it. Yeah, all right. Do you know what vapor is? Oh, uh, vapor? Yeah, what do you think? Vapor. Is it the husband of a viper? No, no, no. <laughs> when the sun shines on a lake, what happens? Freckles set in. No, no. <laughs> I'll explain the evaporation this way. All air contains some moisture. Have you noticed what happens to your breath when you blow it out on some cold morning? No, I ain't paid no attention. When I'm finished with it, it goes its way and I go mine. <laughs> That's the way it goes, yeah. What am I supposed to do, stand around and watch my breath? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, when you breathe on a mirror, in a few seconds it's missed. Well, don't look at me. I didn't steal it. Now, now wait, now. When I say your breath is mist, I don't mean that it's mist. Oh. I mean it's mist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes, yeah. I'd like to get out of this thing. Huh? <laughs> it goes loony. <laughs> you don't understand. Mist is sort of like dew. Yeah, like dew, yes. Honey or howdy? Well, I know. <laughs> Dew is moisture. You know, it's constantly being evaporated from the earth. Moisture-laden air rises, it cools, and lower cloud is born. Would you give me that again? <laughs> moisture-laden air rises. No. It cools. No. And low a cloud is born. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. A boy or a girl? <laughs> <What am I? laughs> Edgar Bergen Hour, transcribed with Charlie McCarthy, Mortimer Snurd, Gary Crosby, Candy Bergen, Carol Richards, Jack Kirkwood, The Mellow Man, and Ray Noble will be back after station identification. This is KERA-FM, Dallas.
From Hollywood, it's the new Edgar Bergen Hour with Charlie McCarthy, Mortimer Sturd, Gary Crosby, Candy Bergen, Carol Richards, Jack Kirkwood, the Mellow Men, Ray Noble, and yours truly, John Heaston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today being Christmas, our purpose is to bring you exactly what we think you'd like to hear. And since one of the most popular shows on the air is the panel quiz show, we now bring you our own version of just such a program. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present that exciting new show that tries to guess your occupation. What the devil do you do? <laughs> Good evening, friends. I am your moderator, John Weekly. Once again, it is time to play What the Devil Do You Do? And now, here is our first contestant. Sir, will you tell our panel of experts your name and hometown? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, my name is Axel Svensson, and I come from Puget Sound, uh, Yingus. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, I, I see you have your hand up. Yeah. Have you guessed this man's occupation? His occupation? Well, I know he's no actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, uh, I wasn't one of them. Uh, tell me, my good man, by any chance are you English? No, no, my goodness me, no. No, I'm not English, no. Well, then I don't think it's very important what you do, Frank. Well, <laughs> well I, I'll say he's uh, half Swedish and half Hawaiian. Half Swedish and half Hawaiian? Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing. Of course there is. Haven't you heard of Swede Leilani? <laughs> How are you fixed for blades? Crosby, I think I'll give you a good sock right in the nose. How do you like that? Them that has gets off. Oh. Now, now. Now, panel, please, as, as usual, to start off our program, you will each get a free guess at what Mr. Swenson does for a living. Yeah, well, let's see if you can guess just what exactly I do. Can you scrutinize what my occupation is? <laughs> I, I think I think he looks like a loser from the medic. <laughs> that is right. No, I think uh, I think he works as a test pilot for garbage disposal. <laughs> I think he manufactures hot milk tables. Hot milk tables? Uh, yes, for people who can't sleep in the same room as coffee tables. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> coffee, coffee. <laughs> oh, steady stomach, steady. <laughs> That's a lot to steady, too. Yeah. Get quiet, you, or I'll blister your varnish. Uh, you <laughs> poor man's Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> Remember, I'm on this panel. Let's face it, you are a panel. Uh, now look, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Stomach. Yeah. All I can say no, to just you Just a minute is... now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Hold everything now. Gentlemen, please, please, gentlemen. <laughs> your... As for you, you Swede with the head it's coming through the weeds. Yeah, well, I've been in, I've been insulted now. I bet go back to Puya Sound, and my job there is in a pewter factor. I make pewter pots. Oh, will pee you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Here's Carol Richards singing "If You Don't Want My Love." Same up here. There. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we now bring you our Meet the People department, and tonight we think we have a real treat for you. Our guest has had a very busy month, but today, Christmas Day, his work is done, and a lot of children, both young and old, are a lot happier for it. Through the courtesy of Santa Claus, we present one of his helpers, Mr. Frank Fawcett. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, welcome to our show, Mr. Santa Claus Helper. You know, you look so much like that jolly old fellow, I could have sworn that when I first saw you that you were Santa himself. Well, that's what everyone says. It's because all Sonny's helpers dress exactly as he does. Maybe he's a little stouter than we are. His eyes are probably a lot smarter, but we try to look as much like him as we can. Now, are you a full-time Santa helper? No, I just help out during the Christmas season. The rest of the year, I'm the supervising engineer for the Broadway department stores. I'm at the service building over on Mission Road. Oh, yes. Isn't that where the old scenic zoo used to be? And later it was the Louis B. Mayer studio. That's right, Edgar. Yeah. I was an actor at that time, and oh. my present office is on the exact spot where my old dressing room used to be. <laughs> well, now, that's an interesting story behind the Santa Claus helper. Well, that certainly is an unusual coincidence, too. Uh, wh what were some of the pictures that you made at that studio, then? Well, I worked in the uh, <clears throat> Three Musketeers, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. Yes. There's a scene or two. He read the same thing, you know. Yes. And Dorothy Byrne, the Haddon Hall, Test of Storm Country with Mary Pickford. And I worked in the Sound of the Sheik with Rudolph Valentino, Anna Christie with Greta Garbo, and I made pictures with Gloria Swanson and Barbara Lamar. She was called a woman who was too beautiful. Mm -hmm. But those pictures are all old and forgotten now, Edgar. Oh, I don't know. They'll probably be popping up on TV any night now. <laughs> I, I think it's wonderful that now you're making a career out of being Santa Claus's helper. What was the most, uh, the most number of children you've ever handled in one session? Well, I once had 500 children sit on my lap in one hour. That's almost ten a minute going through. Yeah. Your lap must have looked like the Hollywood freeway. <laughs> well, I uh, seldom finish the day with a dry lap. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I... Yes, I can see where that might happen. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's one of your occupational hazards, I guess they would call that. And what do they want in these days? I imagine that tastes and toys have changed radically through the years? Mm, not really. Uh, little girls still ask for dolls and baby buggies, little toy kitchens, irons, nurses' outfits. And what do the boys ask for? Well, they want mechanical toys. As always, uh, spaceships, scientific gadgets, more fantastic the better. Mm, I know what you mean. The boy across the street from us got quite a present. It's a home atom bomb kit. Uh, <laughs> on the box it said, be the first on your block to rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the house is still there. What about the old-fashioned presents like model trains? I always like them. Yes, that's for us older boys, Edgar. The children have to grow up to them. Yeah. I guess they have to be big enough and strong enough to, to get them away from their dads. Well, well, what about some of these boys and girls who don't believe in Santa Claus? You run into them, don't you? Yes, all the little tots believe in him, and that's only when they start to school they hear the other children doubt there's a Santa Claus. And though the teenagers are often cynical, well, then about 20, they begin to smile and wink at him again. Do you ever re get requests from teenagers? Yes, the other day, a pretty little blonde about 14 sidled up to me, and she pointed to a boy about her age and said, Sandy, I want him. <laughs> and she probably didn't even care if he was gift-wrapped. Well, would you have a word of advice for Charlie? 
Oh, sure, but I think Charlie pretends to be lots naughtier than he is, Edgar. Yeah, how do you mean that? Well, I'll let you in on a secret. He asked me for Marilyn Monroe in his stocking this year. <laughs> but I think he's just as happy with her tricycle. That's a lot more fun. <laughs> Yes, well, of course. Charlie would probably have a good answer for that. And now that your work is over for another year, Mr. Santa Claus, as helper, I guess you'll be returning to your job at the Broadway Department Store's service building. That's right. But next year I'll be Santa's helper again, I hope. Well, thanks for being with us tonight, and good night to you. It was my pleasure, Edgar. Good night, and a Merry Christmas to you all. And now it's time for our singing group, the Mellow Men. What are you going to sing tonight, fellows? Look out the window. Well, thank you, Hildegard Maestro. <laughs> look out the window, look out the window, see the snowflakes fall. Look out the window, look out the window, we'll come to call. Children singing, sleigh bells ringing as they glide along. Look out the window, look out the window, singing the winter song. Out there where the snowman stands on the icy lawn, children run to shake his hand, for when the sunshine he'll be gone. Hurry, hurry, see the flurry, winter won't last long. Look out the window, look out the window, singing the winter song. and shouting, oh goodness, what an outing, it's winter, it's winter again, see the snowflakes falling, winter sports are calling, it's winter, it's winter time again, look out the window, look out the window, see the snowflakes fall, look out the window, look out the window, winter's come to call. Look out the window, look out the window, singing the winter song. Out there where the snowman stands on the icy lawn. Children run to shake his hand, for when the sun shines, he'll be gone. Hurry, hurry, see the flurry, winter won't last long. Look out the window, look out the window, singing the winter song. Ladies and gentlemen, Christmas is a time for children. And in that spirit, we'd like to present one of the favorite children's stories of all time, Little Red Riding Hood. However, with one slight variation. We've always heard Little Red Riding Hood's version. Tonight, Charlie McCarthy thinks we ought to hear the wolf's side of the story. <laughs> According to Charlie, this is what really happened. I am the wolf. And you know what happened to me. They operated on me to remove one grandmother. But I was innocent. Let me tell you how I got into this mess. It all began in Red Riding Hood's cottage. I'm home, Father. Any messages for me? Oh, yes, Red, my daughter. I want you to drop in on your poor ailing grandmother and give her this oxtail soup that I fixed for her. Why, Father, I didn't think you knew how to make oxtail soup. Oh, it's actually very simple. You just go as far back on the ox as you can and uh, dunk. <laughs> oh, very well, Father. I'm off to Grandmother. Yes, but do be careful, Red. There's a wicked wolf in the woods, and if he starts to run after you, shout. Oh, I will. After he catches me. <laughs> after he catches you. Well, if I'm going to shout, I want to have something to shout about. <laughs> Well, there was Little Red Riding Hood on her way to her grandmother's house, unless something more interesting turned up. 
Little did I know I was her target for tonight. There I was, lying under a tree, looking for butterflies. I was too bashful to look at the birds and bees. When she sashays up to me in a strapless, backless riding hood. Hello, you great, big, gorgeous wolf. No, 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 you stand back, lady. You're, you're, you're singeing my fur. Uh, do you mind if I sit down next to you on this log? Well, I suppose that'll be... <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you, you know, lady, you, you... You kind of smell kind of pretty. Oh, thank you. It's a perfume I'm wearing called Nuit d'Amour. Oh, as much as that, huh? Yes. <laughs> hmm, what's that you're wearing? <laughs> You noticed it, yeah? Yes. At gopher hole number five. <laughs> I was there. Oh, Wolfie. I'm sitting on one end of this log, and you're sitting on the other end. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, right. Well, doesn't it give you any idea? Well, I don't know. I just... Oh, yeah. You want to play seesaw? <laughs> oh, they're not making wolves the way they used to. Look. I'll explain it to you. Yeah, yeah. I'll move a little closer if you'll move a little closer. Well, okay. Now a little closer. Okay. Oh, there. You passed me. Yeah. <laughs> I've played this game before, girl. <laughs> oh, Wolfie. Why are you so afraid of girls? Well, now, now, you take my brother. He met a girl. He put his arms around her, and she screamed, and before he knew it... Yes? Skin died and passing for a mink. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to find myself a real date. Uh, Wolfie, honey, uh, do me a favor and deliver this soup to my grandmother. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. please, yes, Wolfie, pretty, well, please. <laughs> So, little Red turned on to tears, and me, I got soft-hearted, and besides, I figured I was helping a sweet little old lady. When I got to that gray-haired grandma, the first thing she said to me when she saw me was, uh, Oh, goody, man. <laughs> but I'm a wolf. That's the best kind. Yahoo! <laughs> Holy smokes, it runs in the family. <laughs> Calm down, Grandma. Act your age, will you? Age? I may be a grandmother, but I'm still young. I'm just pushing 40. Yeah, well, you must be pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> you pushed it right into 70. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Yeah. Come on, lover boy. How about a game of spin the hot water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Granny, no... I just came here because Red Riding Hood sent me, and I brought you some oxtail soup. Oxtail? Yes. I'd rather have ox's foot. What's the idea of that? Well, I want something with a kick in it. <gasps> Nail down my wig, Sonny. I'm blowing my top tonight. Somebody must have spiked her bran flakes. <laughs> You're right. I did. Oh. But it's so sweet of you to bring poor old grandma that soup. Because I can't do any cooking. You see, I hurt my hands. Oh, what a pity, what a pity. Uh, wh what did you do to it? I scratched my knuckles trying to make four the hard way. <laughs> and that cotton-picking little Joe just wouldn't show. <laughs> Oh, poor old granny. I'll put the soup over here and cover it with your racing form. <laughs> okay. Look, it's ten o'clock. I just got time to run down to Joe's dance hall. I'm entered in the mambo contest. Dancing the mambo at your age? Oh, grandma, how, how, how are you going to wind up? I'm wound up. Now I'm ready to let go. <laughs> Come back, Grandma. Well, what do your granddaughter, Red Riding Hood, say if she finds that you're out? She mustn't. Wolfie, you've got to cover for me. Well... Here, put on my lace cap and my no. bed jacket and hold down the fort for me. Ooh, there's going to be a hot time and the old time tonight. <laughs> How I get in some of the darndest messes. And that's the truth, so help me. There I was in the lace cap and the bed jacket doubling for Grandma. When all of a sudden... Grandma! Grandma! Oh, 
now I'm in a spot. I got to the grabber now. Come in. Hello, Grandma. My, your feet are sticking out of the covers and they look so furry. Yes, they do, don't they, darling? <laughs> uh, those are woolen booties, dearie, I'm wearing. Booties? Yeah. But, Grandmother, there are long claws on them. No, so there are, yes. Those are the needles. I'm still knitting them. <laughs> Why, Grandmother, what a strange-looking nose you have. Yes, well, I'll tell you, I broke it when I was an actress. I overshot the runway. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not my Grandma. You're the wolf. Okay, you've got me now. This time you won't get away. Come on, give me a kiss. No, 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 I won't do it. All right for you. I'm going to fix you. No. Help! No. Help! He ain't my grandmother! The wolf ain't my grandmother! Well, now, there's a new twist on the old badger you game, there. Help! Help! Oh, shut up. Grandmother eater! Grandmother eater! Oh, shut up. Hello, gal. I'm Jack Kirkwood, your local grandmother protector. <laughs> this wolf has swallowed my grandmother. Well, heavens to Duncan Hines. <laughs> That's awful, boy. I think I'll just have to take my axe and operate. Now, Kirkwood, you won't find Grandma in my stomach. Well, maybe I won't, boy. Oh. But we'll just have to take pot luck. <laughs> Kirkwood, uh, are you sure you can perform surgery? Why, certainly, gal. I once operated on a burlesque queen who wanted the scar where it wouldn't show. What did you do? Simple. I operated on her sister. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, are you ready, boy? Uh, yeah. No, please. Now, if you must operate, what about an anesthetic? Oh, yes. I think I'll take one. <laughs> I can't stand the sight of blood. Well, here we go with the operation. Oh, what is get the basket? Would you like a yellow casket? No. I think I'd like to double my blue cross. Look, I'm innocent. Please, take an x-ray first. No, no, I'll... I'll do that afterwards, boy. Then I can check and see what instruments I've left inside of you. This is awful. Will this operation leave much of a scar? Well, of course not, boy. You have your choice. I use the lazy daisy stitch, or if you prefer, I do spot welding. I don't. <laughs> well, here we go again. Oh, I'll be sawing you in all the old familiar places. Oh, Wolfie, I'm back, and I won the Mambo contest. It's grandmother. You see, I'm innocent. Get me a lawyer. The world is going to hear the truth. Oh, no, Wolfie, you can't do that. Your secret must die in this room. Well, why? Do you want to ruin the number one whodunit for all those kids? <laughs> Uh, Bergen, isn't there something you're forgetting? Forgetting? Yeah. I'm trying to give you a gentle reminder, Bergen. Oh, oh, of course you're right, Charlie. I'll do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, to you and yours from the makers of the new gentle Philip Morris, the best wishes for the merriest of Merry Christmases. And a gentle New Year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the spirit of Christmas, let us all join Carol Richards, Gary Crosby, and the Mellow Men in the ever-popular Christmas carol... Good King Wenceslas. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in Gathering with her fuel Hither, page, and stand by me If thou know'st it telling Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? Sire, he lives a goodly ken Underneath the mountain 
right against the forest fence by St. Agnes Fountain. Bring me flesh and bring me wine. Bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I will see him dine when we bear him thither. Page and monarch, for they went, for they went together through the rude winds, wild lament and the bitter My footsteps, my good page, tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less holy. Shall bless the poor. Shall your Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas, everybody! Mortimer Spirit, Ray Noble, and the entire ensemble next Sunday at the same time. Tonight's Edgar Bergen show with Jack Kirkwood, Gloria Gordon, Carol Richards, Gary Crosby, Candy Bergen, and the Mellow Men was produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Sam Pierce. Script by Cy Rose, Hilda Black, and Zeno Clinker. This is John Easton speaking. FM Dallas, North Texas only listener supported radio station. If this is your kind of station, become a member of KERA FM. Memberships start at $15 a year. Give us a call anywhere in the Dallas Fort Worth area at 263 KERA and join up. That's 263 KERA.